I just want to end with a an overview of the rest of the presentation, which will probably take me a year to deliver. So, um, I'll be looking at the various pieces of the AGI puzzle, and it really is like doing a, a jigsaw puzzle. You basically search for pieces of your jigsaw puzzle, and you say, you know, like Gaussian processes I was looking into the other week. Uh, is it a potentially a piece of my jigsaw puzzle? Or will it lead to a piece of my jigsaw puzzle? Don't know. You're just searching for these pieces of the jigsaw puzzle when you find one, maybe you modify it a little bit, and you know, then it becomes part of your system. Uh, I'll also be talking a little bit about the history of the project from 1983 to now. Um, I'll be talking about the technical plan and the organizational plan, you know, how uh, we will collaborate to actually build it. Um, just expanding on those a little bit, I'll just go through it. Um, when I actually come to write these slides, I may obviously uh, change things a little bit, but this is roughly how it's going to be. So there are lots of different ways of building an AGI. Uh, you know, I'm just proposing one particular method, uh, which I have been led to by logic, okay? You know, I just literally started with a blank piece of paper and I tried to work it out logically, systematically, and this is where I ended up. Other people have got different ideas, you know, they follow different paths. By the way, there's a very famous computer science paper called The Next 700 Programming Languages, and that's sort of a pun on that. So we are not building a human. Uh, there's already a mechanism for that. I will describe um, the top-down design process, how you, how you actually build uh, uh, from an engineering perspective something um, this, this complex. Uh, I'll describe something called the unbreakable iron triangle, which is a tension between quality, functionality, and cost. Um, um, the, remember, the three cognitive processes are deduction, well, the induction, deduction, and abduction. So I'm going to um, describe each one. And I'm... I'm I've, ru I've ru written the slides um, assuming essentially an intelligent but not necessarily technical audience because when we build this machine it won't just take AI PhDs it will be it will involve an awful lot of people um, support people donors um, you know, uh, government policy makers and things, they will need to understand it uh, as well to a degree. So I've rather gone to basics. So I will describe, be describing formal systems, the propositional, propositional logic, uh, the 4,000 4, year development of first order logic. It's probably more like two and a half thousand years, but I'm just exaggerating a little. Um, uh, then a logic called universal logic, which is basically an extension. It's first order logic plus definitions. Um, I'll be looking at infinities, uh, different sizes of infinities. MBG set theory, which can basically be built on top of first order logic. Um, uh, there are lots of different set theories. You know, Zermelo, Frankel, Morse, Kelly, whatever. I chose MBG, uh, von, von Neumann, Bernays, Gödel. I'll be looking at meta-mathematics, uh, which is, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, investigating, uh, I'll be describing meta-mathematics a little bit, um, because then um, there is essentially uh, another version of universal logic, um, which is essentially an infinite stack of logics, uh, each one uh, meta-mathematics to the next. Um, and then because once the machine is, it is um, interacting with the real world, the physical universe, um, everything's uncertain. Everything's probabilistic. So we'll be looking at uh, adding uncertainty on top of MBG set theory, which is relatively straightforward, but it's sort of a complex topic. Uh, we're looking at abduction, or a particular type of abduction, program verification, mathematical proof of correctness of programs, which will be an important aspect uh, from a uh, safety perspective. Um, program synthesis, which is the automatic generation of programs along with their proofs of correctness. Hardware synthesis, 
system synthesis, so the synthesis of both hardware and software, mixed hardware and software systems, and we'll be looking at a generalization called witness synthesis. Um, uh, oops, sorry, and we'll also be looking at different methods of speeding everything up, because like I say, computation is going to be the, um, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's going to be the, the, the bottleneck. I don't know whether I shall write about this. I'm not sure. This stands for Probability Statistics, Data Science and Machine Learning. I'm not sure if I'm sufficient an ex uh, uh, sufficiently expert to write that, but it is an important aspect. We'll also be looking at ethics because we're getting to some quite um, philosophical things now the closer we get to actually interacting with the physical universe. We'll be looking at classical ethics. We'll be looking at consciousness. Uh, specifically, a theory which is called Integrated Information Theory 3.0. If you want to do a little bit of reading up. Um, we'll be looking at belief synthesis, which is a process uh, uh, which I call Unified Belief Theory, um, which is uh, the mechanism through which the machine will observe the physical universe and synthesize a belief system from those observations. Then again, we'll look at ethics uh, again, but from a slightly different perspective. Then we will consider what should the dominant goal be um, and all the pros and cons of that. A little bit of the history. project started at Sinclair Research, then there was a company called Man Make Minions, and now finally we're uh, essentially a non-profit, bigmother.ai uh, community interest company. Okay. Um, when now we're getting close to the the actual roadmap now so there will be three phases there'll be a prototyping and evaluation phase you know people knocking stuff up in python and things like that uh, there'll be a working implementation so we'll take the best ideas from the from the earlier stage and implement it um, perhaps um, you know in the cloud um, so that our fellow uh, researchers can play with things. We, we have to be a little bit careful um, that we don't allow people to use our emerging technology maliciously, if you look at the Brundage report. And then finally we will build the actual machine, the actual su supercomputer. Um, so um, there are a couple of global uh, work groups. Uh, we're now looking at work groups now. So there's a quality, which basically um, is a work group who is responsible for making sure that the, the project achieves its objectives. In other words, that the machine is maximally safe, benevolent, and trustworthy. Um, some engineers think in terms of ensuring that good things happen and bad things don't. So there are different ways of um, looking at the problem. Uh, so these people will be looking at um, uh, you know, working in collaboration with all the various uh, people who are looking at uh, potential problems of AGI and all the things that can go wrong, but they'll also be working with the safety critical community and, um, and looking for solutions to these problems. Um, facilities, this is just, you know, somebody's got to build the supercomputer, okay, uh, and the development tools. Um, deduction, so we have to implement universal logic, uh, we have to prove that it is both sound and complete. This is just a quality issue. Uh, we have to build a theorem prover for that logic. We have to build a, a NG, MBG, MBG toolkit on top of it. We have to extend it to uh, the stack of, inf uh, uh, of universal logics. Uh, then we have to add uncertainty. Then we build uh, witness synthesis, program synthesis, hardware synthesis, system synthesis, or basically as much as of those as we can. Finally, auto-refractoring. We basically use the program and hardware synthesis tools that we've just developed to auto-refactor the machine itself. So the machine redesigns its own implementation um, using the tools we've just developed. This is because, like I say, compute is going to be the bottleneck. Um, and if you've ever looked, at, if you've ever seen these synthesis systems working they can generate programs etc that no human will ever think of okay they are just far more sophisticated because they have the precision of thought that humans simply don't have uh, and finally 
uh, we're adding the uh, inductive layer where we're connecting the machine to the real world. So we implement belief synthesis, which is where the machine observes the universe, and constructs its internal belief system. And now we have basically a super intelligent machine that doesn't know anything, doesn't have any knowledge. So then there's a very long process, which might be decades, might be 30 years of education. We, we have to teach the machine how to speak, how to see, uh, you know, get it up to like a you know, five-year-old human level. And then we have to educate the machine in absolutely everything. Because one of the um, hazards is if we generate a machine that's actually, you know, that doesn't know things, that doesn't have common sense. So <laughs> um, the machine basically, in order to be safe, the machine has to have as much knowledge as we can possibly give it, and which can only be done by us devising lesson plans for it and teaching it, and this will take a long time. This is why I expect it at 50 to 100 years, because this, this C3 itself might take 30 years. It's, it's not a difficult, complicated thing to imagine, but it takes a lot of time to actually do. C4, now up until this point, the machine has been what we call an oracle. It's not, you know, you just give it a job to do and it does it, like generating a program or something like that. It's not been autonomous. C4 is the point where we actually um, give it the dominant goal and we give it the ability to generate its own plans, which it will then execute. So at this point, it's autonomous. And this is the point. This is like... In the, in the sort of uh, nuclear analogy, this is where it goes critical. This is where the real safety um, uh, problems uh, occur. Um, up to this point, the machine has been pretty benign, and at this point is where all the where all the hazards occur. So, and that's you know why we have to um, uh, solve all those problems. That's why we had the quality work group right at the beginning. This is where the actual problems arise, the safety problems. After the machine is autonomous, then, to be honest, the, uh, you just attach the various devices to it that you need in order for it to perform its function. You know, it needs to be able to, I don't know, raise livestock and grow crops and whatever. Okay, so that's just attaching different devices to it. Uh, and then finally, you deploy it. And uh, again, this is a massive task. The, you know, the, the social and the economic changes will be uh, profound. Uh, we have to plan for that. Um, but that's basically it. C6 is the 19th step of the, of the roadmap. Um, and we also have, obviously, an organizational plan. So we have project management, we have governance, communications, marketing, fundraising, absolutely the most important work group. Because the more money they raise, the faster we can progress all the other um, uh, aspects, all the other, you know, um, work groups. Exploitation, this is what we were saying earlier. So as technology arises, it makes sense to, um, if we can, to uh, make some money commercially from our technology to, to, to um, it, you know, in addition to the, the money we're raising from donors or grants or whatever. Uh, obviously, if we have money, we need accounting, we need legal people, we need human resources. Uh, if you've got a quality system, you have to have staff training. These are all fairly straightforward things. I know it sounds boring, but you actually have to do them, okay, if you have a real project. Um, and finally, um, sorry, th this is really boring, but the um, when you design a machine like this, it's all about interfaces. If you have all these different groups, pursuing different things you have to very carefully design the interfaces between them and it's it's uh it's almost like it's something called um design by contract the interfaces are the contracts and one person is designing to that interface the other person is assuming that interface interface has been implemented but of course you have to actually design the interfaces you have to make sure that um nothing falls down the cracks so we will have to organize um at cross group committees to make sure that that doesn't happen. There's some obvious uh, committees that we can 
establish. <laughs> so sorry to finish on such a boring note, but that is the um, that is basically the end of the introduction. Okay, so sorry we've gone ten minutes over, uh, but thank you very much. Um, like I say, next time bring two friends each, <laughs> and um, thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you.